The aristocratic organization of Britain's social classes led to the formation of a democratic government in the colonies. From the beginning, a distinguishing characteristic of American society was the diversity of the population, both religiously, ethnically, and economically. This diversity was a product of the way America was originally colonized by many different European nations. Diversity was a positive thing for American colonies. It helped them distinguish themselves from Britain, united them against one cause while utilizing many different perspectives, and eventually shaped the ideals stated in the First Amendment. The Puritans were a religious group that left Britain in order to establish a pure church in America, away from the corruption and evils of the Church of England. They greatly contributed to the work ethic, moral sensibility, sense of mutual responsibility, religious freedom, and, the, and greater representation in the colonies. Another reason that the Americans eventually set up a democratic government was because they knew how it felt not being represented. The British argued that they were virtually represented, meaning that someone else in Parliament was looking out for them. But how likely is this when only 3% of men in Britain could vote? Here is a list of major acts passed by the British Parliament without any representation or say from the colonists. Because Britain's motives for colonization were purely economic, colonists felt little responsibility towards the crown. Many viewed the British as money-loving aristocrats and had trouble identifying with them. This led to the unity of the soon-to-be Americans and a shared belief that one should benefit from their own hard work, a belief that is still reflected in the American work ethic today. For many, the colonies were seen as a place of new beginnings, a place where British laws, customs, and doctrines were removed and one was able to be in control of one's own life. Because of these sort of hopes for the new world, they needed a new sort of government, one where every person could have a say, and people were not just handed money while others had nothing. Um, that is why many colonies reformed inheritance laws, in order to create more social equality. Another new part of the colonies was that they had constitutions. It was one of the most long-lasting inventions of the time period. A constitution was an actual doctrine that guarded the rights of the people and had a system of checks and balances set in place to limit the power of one portion of the government. This was a very new idea during this time period and was certainly quite different from anything Britain had seen. This is an image of the House of Burgesses, the first congressional model in the colonies. Many of the rights that we take for granted as Americans are reflections of what John Locke stated in his social contract. Things like giving up a small portion of our own freedom in exchange for protection and more rights given to us by our democratic government. John Locke also stated that because of the arist aristocratic and monarchical structures in place in Great Britain, they could never understand the importance of natural right, life, liber liberty, and propriety. These ideas eventually became the main pillars of American democracy. I believe that if the colonists had never experienced the fault of British aristocracy, we would not have the same democratic government today, or at least not one based on life, liberty, and equality.